Well, tonight, the story of millions of taxpayer dollars wasted trying to collect money from poor families who can least afford it. It's also the story of an insider at the Minnesota Department of Human Services who may have paid a price for bringing that information to light. Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators is here now with more on that story, Tom. Randy Kelsey, thousands of Minnesota children are removed from their homes every year for neglect, for abuse, or because they break the law. Their parents soon discover the boarding is not free. Parents are charged for their child's stay outside their home, and millions will be spent getting those parents to pay up. Parents call it the system, whether it's child protection or juvenile detention. It's the system that takes away their kids. My son played hockey, raced motocross, and then when he was 14, he, he was the victim of a traumatic experience. And ever since then, almost immediately, his personality changed. A couple years later, her son committed a serious crime and got a nine-month stay in juvenile detention. It turned her family upside down. Then she got the bill. It was about $7,000 a month for approximately nine months. So about $63,000. Yes. You must have been shocked. Yes. Yes, that's an understatement. That's such a huge amount of money. And it was for something that our son did that we are almost getting punished for as well. Uh, uh, from 15 to last year was horrible. Me not being able to see my only son. Hold on Roland's son was in foster care for three years. He got a bill, too, adjusted for his low income for nearly $4,000. I think it's a travesty to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time I've got to talk about this publicly. When children are placed outside the home with foster parents in group homes, treatment centers, or juvenile detention, there's a taxpayer cost. And Minnesota, like every other state, attempts to recoup that money from the parents. First off, these people are overwhelmingly poor, really poor. For Carol Becker, a former analyst at the Minnesota Department of Human Services, it didn't make sense to charge poor parents to take away their kids. Two thirds of them are at the federal poverty level or below. These are the parents that with kids that they can't feed. These are parents that the kids are homeless, um, that, that are struggling in school. Um, these are really, really poor families with children. Um, Becker was part of a small team measuring the effectiveness of DHS programs. She was asked to analyze how much it was costing to bill parents for outplacement costs. The Fox 9 investigators obtained a draft copy of that study from DHS. The findings were shocking, but not surprising to anyone in the system. 4,000 families owed $10.8 million for out-of-home placement. The average bill, often adjusted for income, was more than $1,000. Minnesota County spent $10.5 million in administrative costs attempting to recover that money from parents, but only collected less than $3 million. So for every dollar we spend, we collect 30 cents from these parents. That equation doesn't seem to make sense. It does not make any sense. Well, the rationale is that those children are, are the responsibility of those parents, and so we want to hold the parents accountable. The problem being that the parents that get into this program in the first place are already struggling, and we just make it worse. As the head of Ramsey County's Child Support Division, Trish Scotthammer has seen the hardship. I had many phone calls from parents, mothers particularly, who would say, my child ended up in out-of-home placement. Um, I've got some things that I need to, to do to get my child to be able to come back home, and now you're taking money out of my household. And family court will often demand a parent go into drug treatment, get counseling, or to find more stable housing, all things that require maintaining a household income. One study found that even a $100 a month bill for foster care can cause a six-month delay in reunifying the child with their family. If you lose your home, that's just going to keep the child in out-of-home placement longer. Uh, it's, it's counterproductive to take money out of the household that you're trying to bring a child back into, or especially if housing is one of your issues. And even DHS seems to understand the policy of making parents pay for foster care is counterproductive. Chuck Johnson is a deputy commissioner. 
Probably not a great policy given the uh, population that we work with in this space and what we're seeing as kind of the collateral consequences of what I think was a well-intended, let's make sure that the taxpayers aren't responsible for this cost if there's someone else there that should be. So if this is a policy that everyone seems to agree is a really bad idea to try to collect this money from these families, why are we doing it? Well, it's federal law. It's not just federal law, but also state law requiring the collection of these outplacement costs from parents. In fact, state law even allows the interception of child support payments to do that. So here's the $10 million question. If we spend so much to collect so little, hurting families in the process, why don't we do something about that? But before you answer that question, you should know what happened to Carol Becker after she finished her study. So you have some really interesting data here. Yes. I presume you gave it to your bosses. I did. What happened then? I was terminated. Becker says a complaint was filed against her by the director of the child support division at DHS, who it so happens was also a student of Becker's at Hamlin University, where Becker teaches public policy. In class, Becker presented her findings as a case study of bad policy. In the basement of Bush Library at Hamlin University, because she was a student of mine, um, she blew up at me in front of the vending machines, um, and she said, um, I don't want this released. I think you're, you're doing this to harass me. Um, I'm going to shut you down. And she did. The director filed a complaint that Becker had violated privacy laws. Even though she was working for DHS and the data had been stripped of any identifying information. In a statement, the director told the Fox 9 investigators it was her duty to be a trustworthy steward of private data and its unauthorized release. Becker was terminated on April Fool's Day. She settled with DHS last month. The state basically said, if you don't sue us, we'll remove the termination letter. She presents this report as taking place in kind of a broader context of sort of hear no evil, see no evil. We're not interested in hearing criticisms of programs. No, I don't think that that's the case. I don't think that, uh, I, I mean, I've been here 30 years. There's a lot of internal policy debate that goes on in everything that we do. Uh, I don't think anybody was trying to bury this uh, policy. I certainly did not see that. And yet Becker's troubles fit a troubling pattern at DHS, which in the last few months has seen an exodus of top administrators and policy experts. Becker's among those who see an entrenched and sprawling bureaucracy at DHS, where political calculations trump good policy. And change, if it comes at all, is at a snail's pace. And so it is hugely risk adverse, which means nothing ever gets looked at, nothing changes. The counties do have some wiggle room to lower the cost for these charges. For example, that $63,000 bill we told you about was eventually lowered to $23,000. Still a lot of money. One thing important to point out, it's the federal government that pays 66% of the cost of trying to collect this money. So technically, it's federal money that's being wasted, which may explain why there isn't a huge urgency to fix the problem. There is a state task force looking at this issue. They will likely have a proposal for the legislature. I will tell you nationwide this is going on and there is some belief that this needs to be changed and a lot of people are looking at this. I'm sitting here thinking about this as, as, as a context of who we charge in the state for mm -hmm. what and do we charge inmates for one thing mm -hmm. a and if we don't why would we charge parents right. in a situation like this. That is a point that a lot of parents uh, make as well. We do not charge from inmates in Minnesota. It's interesting the Supreme Court visited this issue with jails because there were jails that were tra charging a nominal fee and they say yes you can do that after you have a conviction you could charge an inmate for their time in jail but that's the point, parents point in this. A lot of times there isn't any due process yet but we're still right. charging the parents for this fee to keep their kids outside the home. Mm. I had never heard of this until your story. I don't, I don't think a lot of people have. It's an important conversation to have. All right. Thanks, Tom.